guys, it's Anna. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make this super pretty cover up crochet mesh kind of dress. I originally got inspiration for this dress from a brand called Okoya Swim, I think is how you say it. And I just really liked the look of like a mesh long cover up dress with the low back. And so I thought I would kind of make my own little version inspired by it. And that's what we're gonna be making today. I do just wanna say that this is probably my least beginner friendly project on my channel so far. It's definitely not hard. Um, the stitches are not like difficult or anything, but the dress is kind of customized to your measurements. And so there's no one size fits all thing that you can do. So you kind of have to try stuff on, adjust, try it on again, and keep like making changes until it fits. So that's why I wouldn't recommend this for like an absolute beginner first project ever, like some of my other tutorials on my channel. But with that being said, it's not super difficult. I think if you follow along um, and you have some crochet experience under your belt, then you should be pretty good. And as always, if you run into any problems or you have any questions, anything, or you just wanna say hi to me, then comment it below and I will try my best to help you out with whatever's going on. But I think that's all I have to say, so we can just get into the video. To start off, you're gonna need a DK weight yarn. This is kind of the thickness of the one that I'm using for reference, but this is just a DK weight, 100% cotton yarn that I got from Hobie. But I can put some alternatives to this yarn because I don't know if you can buy this one anymore. Um, but yeah, any DK weight yarn will do. You're also gonna need a four millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, and then a darning needle. To start, you're gonna make a slip knot. So just wrap your yarn around your finger to make a loop like that. Go through the center and then pick up this yarn and pull through to make a little knot. And then you can just insert your hook into that loop and tighten down. So we are gonna be making foundation treble crochets which if you don't know how to do that, that's totally fine. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And I'll also link a video down below if you still don't get it. But basically this helps us avoid making a super long chain, connecting that chain, and then going in with a treble crochet in each chain. So it saves us some time. Um, it's really not too difficult once you get going. So first you're gonna wanna chain five. So wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through that loop. That's one two, three, four, and five. Now you're gonna wrap the yarn around your hook twice. So one, two, like that. And then we're gonna be going into this furthest V from the hook. So the first chain that we made, you're gonna wanna go right in the middle of there. So you wanna get both loops on your hook like that. And I'm gonna grab my yarn and pull it through there. So now you should have four loops on the hook and I'm gonna kind of wiggle that a little bit so this loop isn't too tight down to the hook. So I have four loops on the hook. Grab your yarn and pull through that first loop. So now again, I have four loops. And now grab your yarn and you're gonna pull through the first two loops on your hook. Now we have three left. Then grab your yarn again and pull through again the first two loops on your hook. Now we only have two left, and then grab your yarn and finally pull through those last two loops, like that. To make our next one, you're gonna be going into this bottom loop here that you can see is kind of open a little bit. So we're going into this one right there, but we wanna make sure we pick up the front loop and the back loop. So first, we're wrapping the yarn around the hook twice, like so, and then we're going into that very bottom stitch there so go in there but make sure you so we have the first loop on our hook but make sure you get the second loop as well like that and i'll show you a couple more times if that was confusing but then you're grabbing your yarn and pulling it through now we have four loops on the hook yarn over pull through that first one yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the first two and then yarn over pull through the first two Again, we are wrapping the yarn twice around the hook, and then we're going into this bottom stitch right there. Hopefully you can see it, you're going into that 
little opening there. So I'm inserting my hook right in the center and you wanna make sure that you're picking up both loops of that stitch. Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. I'm just gonna kind of explain like what we're doing and what each part means, I guess. So we wrap twice and then we're going again into this stitch right there along the bottom. So insert right in the middle there, but make sure you get both loops on your hook like that. And then pull up a loop. And for this first one, we're gonna yarn over and just pull through one loop. And what that does is it essentially makes a chain for us. So that was our chain. And now we're gonna make our treble crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. And we just made our treble crochet. And now wrap the yarn twice around the hook again. Go into that very bottom right there. Insert in the middle and only you want to get those two loops on the hook like that. Yarn over, pull up a loop. And now yarn over, pull through one loop to make our chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over, pull through two. And we're counting these chains over here as our first one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six there and I know that can be a little bit tricky especially if you're a beginner so I'm also gonna leave a link to a video that explains it a little bit better if you're having trouble and basically you're just gonna want to keep doing this until you have both an even number and you want it to be able to go loosely around the widest part of your body essentially so like I said you're gonna want to do a width that is able to fit around the widest part of your body. So for some people, that's your chest, your hips, your stomach, whatever it is for you. For me, that's gonna be my hips slash butt area. So I'm just wrapping this around to see if it's gonna be enough. So as you can see, it just kind of loosely fits around the widest part of my body. And mine fits a little bit loosely and I'm wearing shorts. So you should take that into account. Um, yeah, because I just don't want mine to be super tight. But I did 132 stitches total. And again, that is counting those chains that we made at the beginning. So 132. But yeah, just do whatever length you need to go around the widest part of your body. Just make sure that it is an even number of stitches. So yeah, I did 132. So once you have the number of stitches that goes around the widest part of your body and is an even number. We are actually gonna undo that very last one we did. That was just to figure out how many we needed. So this is with the even number of stitches and we're gonna undo that last one. So for me again, I did 132. So now I'm gonna get rid of that last one and we have 131. So just keep track of the number. Um, if you need to then recount, but yeah, I have 131 stitches now because I just got rid of the last one. And now our final one, we're gonna make it a little bit different because it's gonna be connecting to the beginning one. So to start it off, you're gonna do it just like you normally would. So wrap twice around the hook, go into that very bottom stitch, bottom part of the stitch, I should say, and then get both loops on the hook and pull up a loop. But now we're gonna do it a little differently and we're gonna connect it to this side. So as you can see, I've just kind of folded it around, making sure that there's no bumps or twists or anything. And you're gonna insert your hook into that very first little chain right there. If you can see that, you're gonna be going into this hole with your hook that has all these four loops on it. You're gonna go right into there like that. And then grab your yarn and pull it through that loop. And then you're also gonna pull it through this first loop. So that's effectively slip stitching the bottom of both of these stitches together. And now we're gonna carry on making our treble crochet. We have four loops on the hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. And now we're just gonna slip stitch the tops together. 
So you're gonna go into the fourth chain from the bottom or the topmost chain. So one, two, three, four. It's just this very last chain before you get into that first treble crochet, if you can see that, right into the middle there. Getting both loops on my hook, grab your yarn and then pull through that loop and then pull through the loop that's on your hook. And now we are gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we are gonna start a new type of stitch. So four of those chains of the chain five is gonna count as our first treble crochet. And then we're doing a chain one to make a little gap because we're gonna make kind of a mesh stitch here. So now we are gonna wrap the yarn around the hook twice and we're gonna make a treble crochet, but we're not gonna be going into the next stitch from the hook because this would be, if we were doing a treble crochet into every single stitch, this one would be the first one that we would do because remember this is counting as our first stitch, but um, we are skipping that first one and we're gonna go into the second one from the hook with a treble crochet. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through those last two like that. So as you can see, we kind of have the four to make the treble crochet, and then we have one to make that little gap there. And now we're gonna chain one after making that treble crochet, and then wrap the yarn twice, and again, we're skipping this next treble crochet right there. And we're gonna go into the one after. So skip that next one, go into the next one with a treble crochet. So just insert into that stitch, pull up a loop like that. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over, pull through two. Then chain one again. And we're just gonna wrap twice around the hook. Again, we're skipping this very next stitch going into the next one with a treble. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over, pull through two loops, chain one. And you might also notice that this row is a little bit skinnier, um, like it's kind of going in like that. That would be because the chain that you're making is a little too tight. So when you're making your chains in between your treble crochets, try and do those kind of loosely. But yeah, we're just gonna do this all the way around, skipping that next one, making a treble into the next one. So pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, chaining one, and I'm making that nice and loose. Then make a treble not into the next one, but the next one. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this all the way until the end, and then I will show you what we're gonna do when we come all the way back to this point. I've done that mesh stitch all the way around, and I've made it back around to the beginning there, and I'm just gonna do my chain one after making the treble crochet, and as you can see, there's one more stitch, and then we make it back to those chains that we made at the beginning. And if you counted everything correctly and had an even number of stitches, then this should be what you end up with. So after making the chain one, we're skipping the next stitch and going into the next stitch is what we normally do. But this time, since the next stitch is where we started, we're gonna just slip stitch into that stitch. So you're gonna count four chains of that chain, one, two, three, four not going into that fifth one, that topmost one, because that's counting as the chain one to make that gap. So I'm going into the fourth with a slip stitch. Just insert your hook into the middle, grab your yarn, pull through, and then pull through that loop that was already on your hook, and then chain four. And now we're gonna go back to kind of copying this um, treble crochet row where we're just doing treble crochets. So this chain four that we just made is counting as our first treble. And then the next one is gonna be directly into this gap here, this big opening. So wrap your yarn twice and go into that gap there. Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two and pull through two. So that treble is directly in the gap. So you're gonna have one treble crochet in the gap. And then our next treble crochet is gonna be 
in the stitch right after the gap. So go into that stitch right there and make another treble crochet. So we have our chain, our treble crochet into the gap and then the treble crochet in the stitch right after the gap. Then for the next treble, we're going again into that gap, the large opening there. And then the next one is gonna be in the stitch right after the gap. And then next stitch in the gap directly with another treble crochet. Next stitch is in the stitch right after the gap. So just in the middle of that stitch, make another treble. So that's just kind of the pattern that you're gonna to wanna to follow is treble crochet into the gap, treble crochet right after the gap, treble crochet in the gap, right after it, and the gap right after. And then you're just gonna keep doing this all the way around. And I will get back to you once I've gone all the way around and made it back to the end. I have made it all the way back to the beginning. I have one more stitch to make into this gap before I make it back to where we started with those chains. And at this point you should go back and count all of your stitches just to make sure everything's good. Um, so this I counted and this is gonna be my 131st. Again, we're including this, these chains as our first stitch. And so to get to my 132nd stitch, I'm going to make my final treble crochet into that gap right there. And then we're gonna slip stitch into the fourth chain from the bottom, one, two, three, four. Just right in the middle of that stitch, like that. Pull your yarn through and then pull it through again. And now we are gonna be chaining five, just like we did for this mesh row. One, two, three, four, five. And before we get into making that mesh stitch again, now is a good time to try this on again now that it's a little bit longer. And once again, just make sure that it's gonna fit well and how you want it to. So if you need to make any adjustments, then you can do it now while we're still early on before you get to like the end of the dress and realize that it's too big or too small. But if you've tried it on and you're happy with how it's fitting, then we can keep going with this mesh stitch. We're gonna repeat this row that we did our second row. So we chain five and now, just like we did on that mesh row, we're skipping this very next treble crochet and going into the next one with a treble crochet. Like that and then chain one. And remember we're making that chain kind of loose so it doesn't get too tight there and then skip this next treble crochet and make a treble crochet into the next one. So it's exactly just what we did on the second row, chain one and then treble crochet, not in the very next treble, but in the next one. So I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way around. Um, and again, I will come back once I've made it all the way around to where we started. I've made it back to the end. I did my final stitch with the chain one. And as you can see, we have one more treble crochet right there. But since we do the chain one and skip the treble crochet, we make it back to here, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do a slip stitch into the fourth chain from the bottom, like that. Slip stitch right there. And now we are chaining four because this next row is just gonna be plain treble crochets, no chain ones or anything. So those four chains right there counting as our first treble. Um, and then the second one is gonna be in that gap right there. And this is exactly like what we did for this row right here of plain treble crochets. So I'm just making a treble into that gap and then make one right after the gap like that and then make one into the gap and at this point that's kind of the pattern we're doing for at least 90% of the dress so what you're gonna do is finish up this row making just 
plain treble crochets where you do a treble and the gap and a treble right after the gap all the way around and then connect it like how we did on this row and then as i'm sure you can guess the next row is going to be this mesh stitch row where you chain five at the beginning and then do treble crochet chain one treble crochet chain one where you're skipping a stitch and then the next row after that again is going to be this row so yeah you're just alternating these two rows and i'll show you kind of what that looks like on me once I get there and how many rows I end up doing and stuff. So I am gonna go do that. I'm gonna do enough rows to make like a maxi skirt basically. And I will come back to you showing you what that looks like and how many rows that was for me. Really quickly, I just wanted to show you how to attach new yarn once you run out of a ball without having to weave in extra ends at the end. So this is my new ball of yarn and this is the end that is running out. So this is called the magic knot method, by the way, if you wanna look it up for a better explanation. But you just take your new piece of yarn and you kind of tie a knot around the old piece of yarn, like that. Just tie a knot. And then this is the old piece of yarn that's running out. And then this is the new piece. I'm gonna tie a knot around it. like that and now you're literally just gonna grab each piece of yarn and just pull them together but yeah you just pull them together and then you can just cut off these ends as close to the knots as possible without actually cutting the knots of course and now you can just carry on using your yarn without having to worry about like weaving anything in and now obviously we're working from this ball of yarn now so yeah i just wanted to show you how to do that because it's just a little bit easier so this is 28 rows done and i just started working on my 29th and what you kind of want to do now is figure out how long you want your dress to be and where you want it to hit on the bottom so i'm thinking about there um like a little bit above ankle length and if i hold it there as you can see it's kind of like right below the widest part of my hips slash butt and the way we're going to be constructing the dress is that like once we get up to like this height basically waist height ish we stop working in the round and just work up the front but as you can see like it's pretty loose there compared to my waist so if we just stopped there it'll kind of just drape like that and i do not like how that looks so I am going to be working decreases at this point where it's like right, basically right below my butt because I do have some extra room even for my butt. So I can afford to like lose some width there. So yeah, you just want to figure out where you want it to sit um, at the bottom, whether that's there or there, or if you want it short, whatever. Um, but just do that and then work all the way up until about your butt area and this is where you're probably going to also work some decreases like i'm doing but it is going to be totally dependent on you and your body and how you want it to fit so you're going to have to try it on and see what you're thinking but for me like that is too big if i were to just keep working up it's gonna fall like that and just look really not cute i've decided that i'm gonna work two decreases per row until I get to the top starting now. Um, so hopefully that'll help just kind of cinch it in a little bit. So like I said, I did 28 rows total, including the foundation treble crochet. And I just chained four for my 29th row. And I'm gonna show you how to make a decrease. And you can do these wherever you want on the row really, but it is a good idea to stagger them meaning don't always do them at the beginning or at this one specific spot in the middle. You just kind of want to stagger them so it's not an obvious area where you're decreasing. All right, I've made a few treble crochets and I'm gonna just make my decrease now. So what you'll do is wrap your yarn twice around the hook just like normal and go into that gap just like normal with four loops on the hook and you're gonna yarn over, pull through two loops yarn over, pull through two loops, just like normal, but we're not going to yarn over and pull through those last two loops. 
Instead, we're gonna yarn over twice. Like if we were starting a new treble crochet, go into the next stitch place, pull up a loop. So now you should have five loops on the hook like that. And then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the next two. And then you're gonna yarn over it and pull through all three remaining loops on the hook. And just pull through those three. And as you can see, we have turned those two stitches into one stitch. So the next row, we're gonna be going into only one stitch there. And then carrying on, we're just gonna make our next treble crochet in the next space, just like we normally would. And I'm just gonna keep working around with this treble stitch just until I get to somewhere else on the um, dress, like maybe over here, I can make my next decrease. Okay, I've made it about halfway around. This is where I made my other decrease and this is where we are now. So to make the other decrease, we're gonna do the same thing that we did. So wrap twice around the hook. This is my next stitch that I'm going into. Yarn or pull up a loop, yarn over pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then leave those two loops on the hook instead of yarning over and pulling through. And then yarn over twice again, and just go into the next stitch, which is in that gap, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, Oops. and then yarn over, pull through three. So that just turns those two stitches into one. And now just carry on making your remaining treble crochets. All right, I finished that row and I started the next row, which is like this mesh stitch. And I made it a little ways into the row. Um, remember the row before I did my decrease like about here. So I'm doing it over here now, just to kind of stagger it, like I said. And this decrease is pretty simple. So right before you make your decrease, you're gonna wanna you know, do the treble crochet chain one, but you want this chain to be like a little bit looser because we're gonna be making a larger gap this time. So I made a nice little loose chain there and I'm gonna make my next treble crochet. And normally we'd skip one, go into the next, but we're gonna skip two, go into the next. So we're skipping two stitches before we make our next one like that. So hopefully you can see there Normally we just skip one in the middle. Now we have two that we've skipped and that's making a decrease. So then just chain one and carry on working like normal where you're only skipping one treble crochet and skip one. And yeah, this is just what we've done. I made it a little bit around and I'm gonna make my second decrease. So again, this chain one is gonna be a little bit looser like that. And now I'm doing a treble crochet into the third treble from the hook. So I'm skipping two instead of one like that. Then chain one and then just keep working. Skipping a treble crochet, chaining one like that. So that was my second and final decrease of the row. So I'm not gonna make any more decreases this row. And that's basically what you're gonna do. Um, I highly recommend continuing to try this on and seeing how it's decreasing, if you're decreasing fast enough or if you're decreasing too fast and you can adjust. But yeah, just keep trying it on. Um, and if you think that you need to make your decreases more often, then do that. If you need to make them less often, do that. And if you find that you're good with the width at some point, then you can just keep going without any decreases. It's totally up to you and it's going to vary greatly depending on your body. So there's no like one size fit all that I can give you, but um, yeah, you're just doing decreases until it's small enough to be good for your waist size. So I'll show you once I've done a few more rows, how that looks on and how many decreases I end up doing. Okay, so I am now done making my decreases and this is what it's looking like. As you can see, it fits around my waist much better. So I'll just, so I'll just kind of let you know like how many rows I did, decreases, all of that. Um, 
just for reference, but obviously again, you're gonna have to really like make sure that it works for your body because everybody's gonna be different. So as you know, I started out with 132 stitches all the way around and I just finished up my final row where I was decreasing and that was my 42nd row total of the whole skirt, including the first um, foundation treble crochet row. So I just did my 42nd row and this final row had 84 stitches after making the decreases. So since I started making my decreases on the 29th row of the dress, then I did um, 14 rows of decreases. And so if we do the math on that, it's a little under four decreases per row. And the reason it's like not exactly four is because I did, I think for a couple rows, I did only two decreases per row. And then I decided that I wanted more severe of a decrease to be able to, you know, decrease in time for the waist. So I ended up doing four decreases per row for the remaining rows. So this is kind of where I'm letting it hit, just like above my ankles. And like I said earlier, we're just gonna stop working in the round here and we're just gonna let the back hang like that. So you just kind of wanna work until you're happy with where that sits, if that makes sense, like where it sits on your back because we're not gonna be increasing that at all. So you don't want it to be like too low, obviously. So just make it as high as you want and I'm happy with this. And I also forgot to mention this, but the row that you end on, once you're done doing your decreases, you're gonna wanna make that a mesh row. So either if you're ending, like you were happy with just the plain treble crochets, um, either add another row to make the mesh one or get rid of that one. But yeah, you want that one to be the mesh so that you can follow along with the next step. Okay, so now we are not gonna be working in the round anymore like we've been, but instead we're only gonna go a certain way around before we turn around and come back since we're having that like low back, but we still obviously need to work it up for like the top part of the dress for the front. So what we're gonna do now is a little bit of math. It's not gonna be difficult at all. Like it's really very simple. And basically you're gonna count every stitch all the way around on your final row. So this chain right here is gonna count as our first stitch. So that's one. And then the space right after is two. Then the next stitch is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. So you're just counting the treble crochet and then the space immediately after. Each one is counted as one stitch. So for me, like I said, I have 84 all the way around with this being my first one and this space right here being what I'm counting as my last stitch. So you're gonna take your number of stitches all the way around, which like I said, was 84 for me, and you're gonna multiply it by 0.77, and this is about 65 stitches. I'm just gonna round up, but this is gonna be the amount that we go around at first, um, and then obviously the stitches left over are gonna be what makes up the low back of the dress, and I will show you more in depth of what I'm talking about if that doesn't make sense. But basically we're just starting by going about 77% around the top of the dress and then we'll go right back around so we have this little hole that we're creating okay hopefully this will help explain what i'm talking about a little bit more but basically i've like marked them off right here just to show you kind of the proportions that i'm talking about so this section from this pin right there all the way around the back to the second one not including this little gap in the middle that's that 77% that we just calculated. So that's gonna be my 65 stitches is all the way around here. And basically we're just gonna go like back and forth from there to there, not going in the round anymore and not going over these stitches so that we can like keep that low back and then still build up in the front, if that makes sense. But again, everybody's dress is gonna be a little bit different. So I wanted to show you what the proportions look like on me because you might have to do a higher or lower percentage based on how it's fitting in your waist, if that makes sense. So this is kind of where my waist is and here is where I have those pins like in proportion to my waist size. And then what we're gonna be doing is slowly tapering in here to bring it around to the side and then we're just gonna be working straight up with no tapering, no decreases to make our little front section. 
So if your dress is fitting your waist kind of similarly to mine, then you can do that 77% um, and you're gonna do that number of stitches, which for me was 65. But like I said, if your dress is fitting a little bit looser or tighter, you might have to adjust that percentage to get a similar proportion to what I just showed in the last clip. But regardless of your specific percentage, you're just gonna do the number of stitches that you calculated. So I've done three here because we're counting that chain four as our first one. And then I'm just gonna go all the way until I get to 65 stitches. Just like normal, nothing is different here. We're just gonna change it up a little bit at the end. So I'm just gonna do this and then I'll get back to you once I get closer to my 65th stitch and then we'll switch it up. Okay, I've worked around for a good bit of the row and this is my, I just finished my 63rd stitch. So once you get to two stitches before your final stitch, which was my 63rd that I just made, then we're gonna do something different. We're gonna be making a decrease so we're just gonna make the start of a regular treble crochet into this next stitch. So just go through two and two again, but then we're gonna be making a decrease. So we're gonna not pull through those last two loops and instead wrap our yarn twice again, go into the next stitch space, go through two, two, and then go through all three like that just like when we were making decreases for our decrease rows, just gonna do that. And now chain four, and then turn your work. And now we're gonna be working back the other way. And then once we get over here, we're gonna work back the other way and just kind of keep building it up that way. And now you're gonna chain one more. So that's a chain five at the beginning because we're making our mesh row again. So this is the first stitch that we just went into basically. So that's counting as our first stitch. This is the next one. And then this, the next one, we're going to be going into that one right there. That's two away. Just like we've always done skipping that one and going the next one to make this mesh opening here and then chain one. And then again, skip this one, go into the next one with a treble crochet and then chain one again, skip this one, go in the next, treble crochet, and it's just the exact mesh pattern we've been doing. Just like normal, treble crochet, chain one, and then skip one stitch. You know the drill, so we're just gonna do this all the way around, and then I will just come back to you again once we get closer to the end to show you what to do there, because that's when we're gonna be making our decreases is always at the end of the row. All right, I have three stitches remaining, one, two, and then the fourth chain of the chain four. And then, so I just did my treble crochet chain one. And now we're making a decrease. So instead of just skipping one and going into the next, we're skipping two and going into the next. So I'm gonna go into this fourth chain of the chain four with a treble crochet and then you're gonna chain four and turn. And you're basically just following this pattern over and over again, going back and forth, doing a decrease as you near the end of each row. And you're gonna do this until the width of the row is like from one side of your chest to the other. And I'll show you what I'm talking about, but um, Basically like it'll wrap around the front of your body and this will make up the front panel of the dress. So yeah, I'll just keep doing this and then I will show you how it should look and how many rows that I end up doing. All right, so I am at a good spot here and what I ended up doing was six rows in addition to the 42 rows that I did. So six rows total where we were just going back and forth like that instead of going in the round. And this is how it ended up looking. So if I pull it up to where the bottom of the dress is like where I want it to be hitting on my legs, this is where it goes up to. As you can see, it's like right below my boob area. 
And then the sides um, that I've been decreasing go basically to like, if I pulled it up, it's like right on the sides of my boobs also. So that's kind of what you're going for. Again, for me, this was six rows of decreasing each way, but yours might be a little different. Um, if you have a bigger chest, especially, you might not wanna do as much decreases as I did. So what you could do is um, instead of decreasing at the end of each row, once you get to a width that you're happy with, but you don't want to decrease anymore, but you still need to go a little higher to make it like up to your chest, then you can just go into every stitch and not do any decreases and just like continue up at the same width, if that makes sense. And now we are going to start making the like chest triangles. So we're going to pick up from whatever side we left off on and we're just going to start making like going back and forth like this and then we'll reattach on the other side and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to show you what we're doing now. My last row of making these like end decreases is going to be a mesh row and I'm just going to chain four at the end and then turn. So now that we're making the triangles for the top part, you are again gonna have to maybe make some adjustments based on your measurements and your body. For me, I have a smaller chest. So what I'm gonna be doing is decreasing every time I'm starting a new row and ending a new row. So I'm gonna be decreasing going like right now at the beginning. And then once I get to the middle, I'm gonna decrease on the weight like ending it and then I'm gonna start a new row, do a decrease and then um, at the end I'll make another decrease and then start a new row, decrease, at the end make a decrease and so on. But if you do have a larger chest, then you might choose to do just a decrease when you end a row. So like I wouldn't decrease at the beginning here, I would just go all the way to the middle um, wherever I'm ending for the triangle, which I'll show you. And then I'd make that decrease at the end and then I would make a new row and I would not decrease and then I would decrease at the end of that row. So again, you're just gonna wanna kind of try things on, see how they're going. If you end up doing only one decrease at the end of each row and you find that that's just not decreasing as quickly as you need, then you can decide to do more decreases or fewer whatever. So now we need to count how many stitches we have here. So this is gonna be our first one, this chain right here, and then every hole is also gonna count as a stitch. So all the treble crochets, including this chain and the holes. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on until the very end where this is gonna be your last one, this chain right here. So I have 59 total stitches here and you should have an odd number also like me. So what you're gonna do is subtract one from your total stitch number, which for me would be 59 minus one, so 58, and then divide that number by two, which is 29. And that's how many stitches we're gonna be going across. Since we have a chain here, we can't really decrease that. So we're actually gonna be decreasing with our second and third stitches, like making those into one. So we're just doing the regular decrease that we've been doing where you make a treble, but you don't go all the way through those last two loops and then go into the next stitch, go through two, go through two, and then go through three. Next stitch, treble crochet, and then the next stitch, and I'm just gonna go all the way to the end. And at the end, I will make another decrease. So you're gonna want to count all of your stitches as you go. Um, and so this is gonna be our first one, is that chain. And then you're, even though we did a decrease there for our second and third, you're still counting those as your second and third stitches for right now. So one, two, three four, five, and so on. And you're gonna wanna go until you are two stitches away from that middle number that we calculated. So I calculated 29 and I am I just finished my 27th stitch. Again, counting the second and third one that we did make a decrease still as separate stitches. 
So I just did my 27th and then for the 28th and 29th, we're gonna turn those into one with a decrease. So you know how to do that. Just do that and then connect it with the next one, pull through two, pull through two and then pull through three like that. And now chain five. And now we're gonna make another decrease. So normally I would just skip that one and go to the next one, but we're gonna skip those two and go into the following stitch to make a decrease for our mesh stitch. Then chain one, skip one, go into the next one. And then this is just the regular mesh stitch that we've been doing. Skip one, go into the next. Treble crochet, oops. Treble crochet, chain one, skip one, go into the next, and so on. And then we'll go to the end where we'll make one more decrease. So I'm close to the end of this row, and remember we are making another decrease. So if you look, technically we only have three stitches remaining. We have this one, and then this one, which is these two stitches that we converted into one, so that's one, two, and then three is gonna be the fourth chain of the chain four. So since we're making a decrease with the mesh, the mesh stitch, we did the chain one, and now normally we just skip one, go into the next, but we're skipping two, going into the next. So we're just gonna go into that fourth chain of the chain four. So one, two, three, four at the top. It's kinda hard to go to. Just go in with a treble crochet and then chain four and turn. Now we're making another decrease. So we're gonna go into that first stitch and make a decrease with um, the next one. So don't pull through those last two loops and just connect it with the next stitch doing the decrease that we've done so many times now. And then you're just gonna go this regular row where you're doing treble crochet in the hole and then in the stitch right after. I'm close to the end now and I now have two stitches remaining, one in that hole and then one in the fourth chain of the chain five. So we're gonna make a decrease and connect those two. And then go into the fourth chain of the chain five, so one, two, three, four, like that. Now chain five and turn. We are making another decrease. So skipping this stitch and this one and going into that next one to make a decrease. Chain one, and now we're just skipping one going into the next one like normal. I'm at the end and we have three stitches remaining. One, this cluster of two that we turned into one, and then this last one, which is the fourth chain of the chain four. So I do the chain one after my treble and I'm skipping these two and going into the fourth chain of the chain four, which is right there. And that makes a decrease. And then chain four. Now we're making another decrease, so we're gonna combine our second and third stitches. So we're not going all the way through those last two loops. Instead, we're gonna combine it with this next stitch. Pull through those three, and then go into the next hole. And just do this all the way down, just going into every hole and then the stitch after the hole with treble crochets. Here at the end, we have two remaining and we're gonna make a decrease, which I'm sure you can kind of gather at this point because we're doing what we've been doing for the past few rows. So I'm gonna go into that fourth chain and then go through two, two, and then three to make that decrease. And now we're just gonna keep um, following this pattern for a few more rows of just going um, and making a decrease every time you start a new row and every time you end a new row. So this is where we are ending up. For me and my size, this ended up being 12 
total rows to make up the triangle starting with this first one here and I kept going until I ended up with two squares here. Now if your chest is bigger than mine then um, the height that works for you might leave you with more squares at the top and that's fine but this is what worked for me and I'll show you really quickly what it looks like at the top like on me. So this is kind of what it's looking like on as you can see this part is like right at the top here and if yours doesn't go that far up like maybe it stops here or something then that's totally fine your strap is just going to start a little bit earlier but that's completely fine um it's not a problem but yeah mine's like at the top of my shoulder basically so at this point if you have like a wider area right here um you would just like slip stitch to the middle three stitches and that's what we're gonna do here, but you're gonna have to like slip stitch more to get to those stitches, if that makes sense, because you have a wider um, row length, I guess. So turn your work and just slip stitch into this space right here, like that. And then chain one, because now we can make three single crochets in the center here. This is about the center. And now in this hole right here, I'm gonna make a single crochet. And then I'm gonna make a single crochet in the stitch right after this treble crochet. Oops, I wanna get both loops. Second single crochet. And then our third is gonna be in this hole right there. So we have three single crochets and now chain one and turn. Now make a single crochet into that very first stitch right there. And then one in the second stitch and then one in that third and final single crochet as well so we're making three single crochets then chain one and turn and now we're doing the same exact thing make a single crochet in that very first stitch and then in the second stitch and then finally in that last one then chain one turn and do the exact same thing so we're literally just making our strap now for one of the sides and you're going to just keep doing this where you do three single crochets and then chain one and turn and so on um, and I'm gonna do this until I have a length that's about 18 or so inches long for this strap but again this length will vary like if you're um, the top of this this last row that we did doesn't go as high on you as it goes on me then you might need a longer strap and if yours goes higher then you'll need a shorter strap and so on right here is my strap it's about 18 inches long ish and this is 65 rows total of the single single crochets so at the end of this row you're just gonna chain one and cut your yarn and then pull it through like that and just tighten it down and now we just have to do the same thing, this whole triangle thing on the other side. So you're gonna find the other side of the top and just flip it over so that now you can work right to left. And you're gonna take your yarn and make a slip knot. You're gonna insert your hook into the fourth chain from the bottom. So if we look at the front of the chains, it's one, two, three, four, right there. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that fourth chain and now grab your slip knot put it on the hook and just tighten that down a little and pull it through and now chain four and you can just put this tail to the side we'll worry about that later but now we're just starting the process over like we did on this side where we're decreasing at the start of every row and at the end of every row and for now um, for this very first row we do need to count our stitches to go um, to that number we calculated earlier, which is 29 for me, but yours might be different. So we chain four, now we're gonna make a decrease. So just do the go through two, go through two, and then wrap twice, go in the next stitch, go through two, go through two, and then you should have three loops remaining and you're gonna go through all three. So that's our decrease. Now we're just making treble crochets, one in each stitch. 
I'm now two stitches away from that 29 stitch that we calculated earlier. So now that I'm two away from that count, we are gonna make a decrease to end off the row. So go through two, go through two, wrap twice, go in the next stitch, go through two, go through two, and then go through three, and turn those two stitches into one. Now chain five, and at this point, it's exactly what we did on the other side. I'm not gonna show it again because it's exactly what we did earlier, but feel free to go back and watch this part of the video if you need to. But I'm gonna go do that and do all the straps and everything, like do everything exactly the same. And I will come back to you once I've done that. I went ahead and did the other triangle on the other side as well as the strap. And then I also wove in all of my ends, which there weren't too many of them to be honest. So it was pretty quick. But once you do that, then your dress is done. I love how it turned out so much. And I love the fact that it's like custom to your body. So it fits perfectly. And I just think it's gonna be so cute for the summer, like as a cover up. It's just perfect. Like it's very vacation, summer vibes, and I love it. So thank you so much for watching and being here with me. If you made your own dress and stuck through it, then I commend you because this was kind of a longer project. It's definitely not super difficult, but it does take some time. So like I actually applaud you if you got through the whole thing. Be sure to tag me if you post a picture or video or something of your dress because I'd love to see it. I'd love to see what you guys make with my tutorials. And I'll have my Instagram and all my social media stuff in the description if you feel so inclined to follow me. And as always, feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. I plan on posting a ton of crochet related videos this summer. And I also wanna try sewing and maybe knitting or something. So yeah, there's a ton of stuff that I have coming. So be sure to subscribe. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.